Hey guys, Silence out here. Welcome back for more Digimon card game unboxing. So this time around we have another start deck which is start deck 09. Um, there are a few other start decks that are supposedly <laughs> um, good <laughs> and because they are too good <laughs> it has become extremely hard to find. So we're talking about the Gallon Mon start deck and of course I think it was the um, what Dramon? I guess uh, V V Dram. I don't know. It's a Dramon deck, um, which is a blue line. So those two decks are extremely, extremely hard to find. Um, they didn't get reprinted too much, and of course, because they the decks actually came with promos, just like what we've seen with the Jasmon deck, and of course, um, the Regna Lord Mon decks. Um, but the promos given in those decks or exceptionally sectionally good in fact they were the first of its kind and became staples for most of the decks nowadays and uh, that's one of the reasons why people bought those decks up mostly because of the promos then of course there was also the reason that because Gallonmon um, has become kind of a meta deck and it has basically wiped its existence of all the stores <laughs> And yeah, even on Amazon Japan, you can not even find a single copy of those decks anymore. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, so anyway, we have to make do with what we have. So we have ST09 here, which is the, uh, the, the um, George's deck for Imperial Dramon. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. So I, I actually liked uh, Digimon Adventure 02. Um, it wasn't too bad, you know, but the main main brand new mechanics of having two Digimon combined to one that's, That was a pretty fun idea for a TV series, but I don't know how it's going to play out through the card game itself um, Some people liked it, some people disliked it, but who knows, let me have a go at it myself uh, one of these days And maybe if I do a let's play video for the decks um, Yeah, then we can judge for our own selves, but for now, let's take a look at the contents of ST9. So let's pop this baby open. And of course, let's take a look at the contents. So, first things first, let's pull out the playmat. Of course, so let's take out the deck, toss the plastic box away. So, as usual, with all these large box starter decks, um, they usually come with two sided playmats. So, of course, one side being the Imperial Dramon. So that's pretty nice. Then of course at the back we have Pildramon and I can't remember the name for this fella but later when we take a look at the card we'll definitely know its name. So this is actually a pretty nice design. We have two Digimons at the back unlike some of the other um, play sheets that we've seen in the other videos. There usually is only one just like this Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode here. So alright let's put this down and let's take a look at the cards itself. So first things off, let's pull this sleeve out. As usual, Bandai, good job, very tight fit. And of course, we have uh, Minomon. Did I get it right? Because this Mi looks a bit different from what I'm used to. So, um, four copies, as usual, the cards get stuck together. Let's put this in the raising area. Uh, and then of course, we have Vmon. So, oh. what? Two copies? Seriously? Is this one of the reasons why this... Vmon is kind of expensive, so it does have the ability where um, if it's just summon out instead of Digivolution, you can look at the top three cards of your deck. Then of course, if they have V um, or free, the free typing. So as you can see, the free typing is here. Um, in the in the, in any of the three cards that you open up, you can add one of them to hand. And of course, you can choose to put the rest of them in any manner at the bottom of your deck after that. So two copies. So if you need a play set of this, you definitely need to buy two of these start decks. Then of course, we have four copies of Vanilla Betamon. So that's pretty cute. Looking at this winking Betamon here. So adorable. <laughs> all right, then we have, oh, oh, cards are all stuck together. Four copies of um, X uh, X V Mon, so X V Mon. So that's pretty awesome. So from hand, this card enters the field. Um, Midori, look for what green Digimon. Oh, if you have a green Digimon on field. Oh, 
minus one cost to summon? Really? That's actually pretty cheap. So it will become three cost if you have it from hand and summon up to the field and you have a green Digimon on the field to reduce the cost of summoning. So that's not bad. Then of course it's Digivolution ability. I, uh, when attacking, this Digimon is um, around. Oh, green Digimon is around. Uh, this turn, this Digimon gains 1000 power. So pretty decent. Not the best Vmon, but I mean, not the best X Vmon, but still something there. Alright, so then of course we have the foils. We have two copies of Pildramon. Um, this is the main George's card, I guess, uh, aside from, yeah, even, even Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode doesn't have its George's ability, so I guess it's the main George's card. Uh, Jogress. <laughs> Keep pronouncing it wrongly. So, Jogress, um, then of course, basically you need a blue and a green uh, level 4 Digimon on the field. Then you have Jogress, I think, um, yeah. Then of course, when you evolve, it has an ability. If it's Jogger's Evolve, um, DP 6000 and below opponent's Digimon 1 copy, uh, put it below the deck. Wow! That's actually pretty useful. <laughs> okay, so I guess if you need a playset of this, definitely you will have to buy two of these start decks. So you get two copies of the Vmon, which is pretty decent. And I've got two copies of this Imperial uh, Pale Dramon. Um, so yeah. And of course, it has the attacking ability. Once per turn, this Digimon um, can restand itself, so um, basically active once again. So that's not too bad. No wonder this thing is pretty fun to play. Okay, Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode. So when evolving, uh, this Digimon evolves level 4 and below. Blue and green Digimon cards, one copy. What? Okay. Oh, so if you have one, if you have level four green and blue Digimons, you can choose one of each from the Digivolution line under this Digimon and summon it out to the field without paying its cost. Wow, that's actually pretty useful. Dang. Okay, <laughs> I'm convinced this deck is pretty fun. Um, then I guess we have another iconic green blocker if you guys have been playing all the start decks so this thing looks reminds me of a, a what they called it a meta bot <laughs> yeah it's another another series but still it does remind me of another a met, a meta bot designs or uh, i can't remember the japanese name of the anime um yeah, I seriously cannot remember off my top of it. Anyways, if you guys know the name of Metabot in Japanese, let me know. Uh, I can't remember at this point in time. Anyways, what was this called again? Uh, Kokabuterimon. Okay, there we go. Then of course we have the iconic Wormmon. It's so adorable. Look at that protecting his little buddy. <laughs> then of course it has um, Digivolve ability during your own turn. Uh, uh, until the end of your own turn. Um, um, if there is other Digimon aside from himself, um, one Digimon in your hand, you can summon. What? What? Ignore the cost and evolve? Really? Ignore the cost and evolve? Seriously? That's actually pretty powerful. <laughs> okay, then of course we have one of the main powerful cards for this deck, which is Stingmon. Uh, we, we know how badass Stingmon is from the anime itself, so that's pretty awesome. So, if this card is in your hand and it comes out to the field, and you have a uh, blue Digimon around, the cost is reduced by... So, so basically it's the same thing as the, the uh, XV mod... Uh, yeah, XV mode, I think it's called XV mode. Um, so, yeah, pretty much the same thing. And of course, when it's under the another evolved Digimon um, and it attacks, if you have a blue Digimon around, you draw one. So that is actually very useful, drawing one. Holy crap. All right, moving along. So we have two copies of this Sunaimon. 
um, I don't know if this is any useful but it does have the security ability so um, I guess this was I mean it's not the first of its kind right um, BT02 included this kind of uh, effects basically where if this Digimon is in your security and it gets checked you can actually um, summon out onto the field so yeah that's pretty useful and then of course oh it has even a summon ability opponent's Digimon 1 rest wow wow this is actually useful no wonder there's only two copies in the deck so i guess if you want the play set of this you have to buy another deck but from the looks of the effects so far i don't see why not no most of the cards are pretty interesting oh four copies of this joyous digimon okay what's his name um dino bimon interesting was it ever shown in the TV series. I don't think they've ever joggers into this form before. I'm not sure. I can't recall. Zero Two has been a long time ago. <laughs> so if it was ever shown in the TV animation before, let me know in the comment section down below. But I remember this was in the games but not in the TV series. I don't know. But anyways, let's take a look at it. So level 4 blue and green Digimon uh, joggers for free. Um, when it's when it's evolved, you activate ability, opponent's Digimon 1 copy, rest, um, joggers evolution, then you can activate this ability uh, until your during the opponent's next turn, active phase, you can active Oh, so basically you can restand this Digimon again. Oh that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Four copies. Although I would prefer to play um you know, Imperial Dramon. Pale Dramon, sorry. Not Imperial. A Pale Dramon. <laughs> and we have another vanilla Digimon. Uh, Jueru Bimon. Hmm. Okay. Probably could change for other things if you're trying to mod this deck to something a bit more playable. Then what is this now? Gran Ku Kuagamon? Grand Kuagamon? Okay. So rare it's a rare so it has a bit of the modern rare treatment so that's pretty interesting i wonder when they started this rare treatment hmm security attack plus one and of course it has an evolution ability this turn um this digimon's dp plus four thousand power so it's okay it's not the best grand kuagamon out there i still think i think it was bt2's grand kuagamon that was actually more useful than this thing but, you know, uh, it is what it is. It is still a rare only. So, it's decent, I suppose. Alright. So, we have rare treatment option cards. Um, Mega Death. Death, I guess. So, uh, security effect. This card's main effect activates. So, main effect. Opponents, Digimon, one copy, rest. Um... So after resting that one opponent Digimon is returned to hand. Oh, so you can choose another rest Digimon and return it to hand. So let's say for example, if opponent has multiple resting Digimon aside from the one that you just rested. Um, so yeah, you can return one to hand. That's, that's pretty decent. I guess that's why it's rare foil. <laughs> so yeah, once again, two copies. If you need another set, you know, you know what to do. Alright, so four copies of this option card. Um, Hermascaredo. So, I guess... Hmm, what does this do? So, trigger is security effect or it just adds it to hand. That's kind of a bummer. Main effect. For this turn, one of your own Digimon DP plus 2000. Um, then after that, if you have a blue Digimon around this turn, uh, one of your Digimon has the piercing ability. Oh, oh, nice piercing ability. So, but it does cost one, so that's not too bad. But the trigger for the security check is kind of a bummer. It would have been more powerful if it does something else other than add this card to hand. <laughs> so it's a pretty decent option card, but still there are better stuff out there. And of course, the main reason for this deck purchase. Uh, Flower Cannon! Yes, it's Green's deck's one of the more iconic option cards. 
Um, so yes, yeah, security check. Um, blocker or Mota Knight. So if opponent has no blockers around, all their Digimons rest. That is so useful. It just basically obliterates their chance of destroying your security. So nice that it's actually a rare foil. So that's pretty pretty cool. They do have this reprinted in like, um, like I said in the um, start decks for Tai Chi, Matt, Yamato and Takeru. The first three starter decks. Um, basically Premium Bandai did reprint some of the option cards and this is also one of the option cards. Flower Cannon was reprinted with an alternate art in that Premium Bandai set which is now extremely extremely expensive. So it's nice to have at least a full set here and of course if you buy another set of this starter to complete a playset, you will have 8 copies of this beautiful shiny green card. <laughs> so yeah, the main effect is basically to rest one opponent's Digimon which is decent uh, especially for green decks which is always to, you know, um, obliterate opponents, rest Digimon with a lots of piercing and combo damage. Then of course, with all the modern start decks nowadays, you have nice solid plastic memory gauge cards unlike the the first three start decks that only gave memory gauge cards with all these useless point cards. So yeah guys, that's it for the Imperial Dramon. Um, what's this deck actually called? <laughs> Let's stick in the name. Start deck Kyo... What? Kyo... Kyo Kyoku no Kodai Ryo. So I guess... What? Kyokoku no Kyodai Ryo. Kyodai Ryo is gigantic dragon, so what is Kyokoku again? I can't remember my kanji. Anyways, <laughs> that's the end of this start deck. Start deck. Uh, what's the number? Number nine. There we go. So, guys, as usual, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Are the cards here still viable for this current meta of Digimon the card game? Are you looking forward to purchasing maybe one of this start deck after looking through the cards because you have some idea of what to play? Or maybe you just need certain cards inside this deck to just complete your collection or, you know, play sets to get ready for any kind of change of meta. Guys, as usual, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like, subscribe for more content coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye!